Good afternoon, everybody. I am Steele Marcou, Editor-in-Chief of Veranda Magazine, and I am thrilled to welcome you here today to our first panel, Client Confidential, Blue Chip Designers on the Conversations that Changed Everything. We have a really exciting group of designers here with me today, and I'm so excited to introduce you to them. But first, before I do that, I want to thank our host, ADAC, of course, and our sponsor, The Shade Store. Uh, now we're going to hear, um, hear a few messages from The Shade Store. So in 1946, our grandfather uh, started in the industry by selling fabric off the roll. That company started in Mount Vernon, New York. My father joined the business and evolved that into custom window treatments, upholstery. The business was based around one thing, and that was primarily service. Today, that's absolutely the foundation of how we run our business. We are the, the go-to source for custom window treatments. They take all the guesswork out of everything. They come, they measure, they install. They've made every part of my job easier and my projects go smoothly, leading to happy clients. Working with a shade store, it makes me look good, it makes my job easier, and ultimately it makes my clients happy, so it's a win-win. Thanks to the Shade Store, I think we can all agree that they have um, changed the way des the design industry works, and we're going to be talking a little bit more about that later in our program. First, I wanted to give you a little overview of what we're going to be discussing today. Um, when it comes down to it, so much of design work really comes down to mastering the art of conversation. Today's designers have to be detectives, sussing out what their clients want and need, they even have to be persuasive, sometimes convincing their clients to take the next step. They have to read between the lines when there's a disagreement between clients, husbands and wives or partners. Uh, they ultimately have to be the world's best listeners and sometimes even psychologists. So I'm thrilled today to have three of the best designers in the country working today, Martin Lawrence Ballard, Sheila Bridges and Victoria Hagen. Guys, if you want to turn on your videos, I, we'd love to see you. I'm going to say a few remarks about each of you before we dive into our conversation. First with Martin. Martin is, as many of you know, an LA-based designer. He's also kind of known as the king of design television around the world. But more importantly for today's conversation, today's purpose, he's an interior designer and a product designer known for marrying sophistication and fun, cool and with cool and inviting and in, in, interiors that have a global style as well as a true personal sensibility. Um, this is really what clients, uh, both on the design side of things and the product design side of things, love about him. And I'm thrilled that he can join us today from Los Angeles. Welcome, Martin. Hello, Steele. Thank you so much. Nice and hello, ADAC. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Next, I'd like to introduce Sheila, a New York-based designer who also has had quite a sex successful TV um, career in the design television world. But today I really wanna focus on what her design and product clients love about her, which is her thoughtful, smart approach that combines both wit and wisdom into practical yet playful design solutions. This is evident in her colorful and layered, this is as evident in her colorful and layered interiors as it is in her signature Harlem toile which is now a permanent part of the wallpaper collection at the C Cooper Hewitt, which is incredible. Congratulations for that and welcome Sheila. Thank you, hi Steele. Hi, nice to see you. And last but not least, I'd like to invite Victoria Hagen to join us. Victoria is also a New York based designer. Um, and as I was preparing my introductory remarks about Victoria Hagen, I couldn't, I couldn't help but sort of ruminate on the fact that if modern luxury is comfort, as a very, very wise man told us in preparation for this panel, we're gonna hear more about that later, then Victoria is the most luxuriously modern, one of the most luxuriously modern designers that there is. Her interiors are known for their refinement down to every last detail, but more on that in a moment. Um, they're beautifully thought through down to the inch, as she will tell us about a little later, um, to ensure that her clients have the ultimate comfort, not to mention beautiful surroundings. That's only part of what makes her so loved by her clients. She's also just as thoughtful a person as she is a designer. And we'll, we'll get into that more today. So guys, I'm so thrilled that you could join us to talk about talking, 
especially in this new format that we have uh, of Zoom and virtual talking and virtual conversations. Um, and I wanted to kind of kick off our conversation about conversations uh, with a question asking you, how do you sort of determine what your clients want and need from you? How do you, what's your process like um, when you're kind of meeting with a client and trying to just get to know them a little bit better and figure out what they really, what they really want and need? Speak I guess now. I find myself listening a lot. You know, I don't want to hear myself speaking. I want to hear what they have to say. And I always think it's the unexpected things that they say that kind of begin to clue me in on what's important. Um, but uh, because it, I think the inspiration comes from them. Mm. And I don't think they realize how much inspiration they provide. Oh, but interesting. for me, they're it. And I'm looking to understand them and to see when they smile and to see when they're, you know, you know, when they say, oh, I love that. Or, I, you know, breakfast is my favorite time of the day with my children. <laughs> like when I, I like you're looking for the clues. And um, I always say in my next life, I'm going to be a mystery writer, you know, I solve the latest um, because I am looking for clues to piece it all together. Victoria, has that been challenging to do in a virtual environment over the last year plus? Uh, I think in the beginning it was overwhelming and, and, and it just didn't seem, because I spend so much time like looking for physical clues when they move, when they cross their legs, you know, do they take a, you know, a sip of water? I'm just <laughs> looking at all of that. And on the screen, you're, it's really one-on-one -on -one with them mm. and it's a little harder. Um, and in the beginning, I, I, you know, I found it very challenging, um, but uh, I think I, I, um, we spent more time just chatting about other things. And I think sometimes when you just talk about what you did on the weekend or sure. what your kids are up to, where they're in school, like, you're listening because you know whether you like a chair or not I've got another one to show you you know <laughs> I'm not getting all that good stuff so uh I um it, it's just a little more relaxed I think in this format you know um not being in the office right you know? that kind of takes right even Don't you think, Martin, it's just been a little more relaxed. You know, people are in my home. I, I, I don't work out of yeah. my home, right? I, I think I think that the most important and most successful interiors are those where you've created a relationship with the client, where you sort of start to understand them, you know, a little bit about their life. And as you were saying, it's really about understanding how they live. And so always you know when you end up with that relationship which can become very close actually certainly through the period of 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 the decoration process um the closer you are the more you know about them the more successful it becomes mm -hmm. and it is interesting because as victoria was saying you know normally when you have your meetings people come to your office or you go to them and um you know it becomes sort of much more personal on Zoom because you are, they're not distracted by your office or intimidated by your office or you're not so sort of, you know, worried about being in their space. You are together in a personal way, yet you're not. So somehow or the other, there is an intimacy that comes through Zoom that is strange because you think it wouldn't, but you do get these moments that offer you really important information that help, you know, they become threads that help create that tapestry. Do you think, Martin, do you think clients, um, you know, thinking about the world pre-Zoom, when they would come to your office or maybe invite you into their home, were they nervous? Because I could put myself in that position and think, oh, I don't want him to see what my house looks like now. Like, you know, with it. whereas Zoom might just say, oh, he can only see this little rectangle. You know, there's no judgment or something. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, certainly when you go to people's homes, sometimes they're embarrassed because it's not what they think you should be seeing. Right. You know, and the reality is that we're there to, to create their decorative Very fantasy. We, we don't want to walk into it already because our job would have been done. Right. But, <laughs> but yes, 
they can control the environment, you know, as we all have now. We're all in a controlled environment that we want to be seen in. Sure. So it, it's something that they can control, which, you know, is good. That's so interesting. I had not thought of that before. Sheila, tell me a little bit about your process. How do you, how do you get to know your clients and kind of draw them out? Um, I think, you know, like Victoria said, it's really about listening. I, I you know, whenever I uh, speak with young interior designers or designers who are starting out and, you know, we talk about skill sets and, and what's most important to me, the most important skill set that a designer can have uh, is, is being a good listener um, because the interior that we design should not be reflective of us, it should be reflective of our clients, of their lifestyles, of, you know, their values, their aspirations. Um, so I think for me, initially, I just ask a lot of questions and, uh, and, and, you know, there's, there's that learning curve there in the beginning. And, and I think people are sometimes afraid to really sort of show you exactly who they are. And again, that's part of what I have strangely been enjoying about Zoom because these personal sort of things kind of creep in whether we want them or not. So it's like, you know, your, your, the, the person's, you know, son goes like skateboards by in the background or, you know, the, my dog starts barking and jumping up or something, you know, right. so these things that you may not, you can, you know, when you're going to someone's office uh, for initial meeting, you know, I think some of it is a little staged in a way. Right. Right. Really uh, presenting your um, sort of best version of yourself. And, and the thing with Zoom is, again, it's like right now I have scaffolding that's going up on my building. It, can everybody hear that? I don't know. But so <laughs> it's just sort of life really does kind of creep in in a very, very real way. That's so interesting. How do you, I want to ask another question before we move to the next bank of questions about this, but how do you all determine whether or not you're a good fit for your client? As you're getting to know the client, you know, have you had moments before where you've thought, I don't, I don't know if I'm the right fit or, or other moments where, you know, yes, I'm, I, we can do this. This is going to, we're going to make magic together. Yeah. I mean, there, there, there's got to be a connection. You mm -hmm. have to feel a connection with one another. Mm -hmm. If you don't, it, nothing's going to be successful, you know? If, yeah. if, 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 you're, if you're with someone that has a completely different taste than you do, and, and when I say that, obviously we all design very individually for each client, so none of us are giving a look. Right. But, it's, you, you, but you've got to have a, a, a feeling together that makes sense, a vision. Mm -hmm. And I think if you can feel that vision to begin with, you know that you're on a successful path. That makes I sense. think the one thing that I realized you know, I've been working a long time, so I, I'm always learning every day. But the one thing I realized is there's a difference between liking your client and getting along with your client. Because, right. you know, we all go to a lot of parties, like a lot of people. Sure. But I feel like one of the most important ingredients that I'm looking for when I'm chatting with someone is, can will they trust me? Mm. You know? can we establish that bond of trust? Right. Because this interior design business is based on trust. You know, you start working with someone and then there's a really long time and a lot of money that goes by before you can like share what you've created. So there needs to be that trust. I always say, it's not like we're selling a car, you know, it's not <laughs> like what's the interior, what's the color? Like there are thousands of decisions. And if that trust thing is not there, I, I sense that it won't be a good, yeah. um, you know, I'm not sure that to, to have that um, doubt throughout the process, it's not good for the creative process. So I'm That's just always fun. looking, you know, and I think there are a lot of things that go into trust, you know, um, for sure. I, mean, I, I think that um, a lot of times there are signs very early on. I think when you're interviewing, at least, you know, 
previously, you know, before the pandemic. Um, you know, Victoria, you mentioned sort of body language and cues of, you know, what people, you know, they may be saying one thing, like words coming out of their mouths, but their <laughs> body says something else. And, you know, for me, that that was always a big part of it is, is um, trying to figure that out in that initial or the first few meetings. I know that there have been projects that I went into thinking I'm really excited about this and it's here's one example um, I remember there was a townhouse project that I was really excited about I think we had the initial meeting and then I ended up bringing one of my contractors with me because it was an extensive um, renovation and it was the weather was terrible and I think it was snowing out or something or very rainy and I just remember that the client um, the dog was very, the client's dog was very friendly and, um, she was so frustrated by the dog. She, she actually locked him outside and oh, no. on their, on the sort of like balcony. And I, I sat in this meeting, literally watching this dog through the glass, through the window. And after the meeting, I, I said to the contract, I said, this is so clear the indication of how she's going to treat us by how she has treated this animal we were like for an hour this dog was just like sitting outside with you know it was just pouring down rain or oh my God. and and he and i agreed that we didn't want to take the project and we didn't yeah. take the project based on that behavior so um, as much as they're interviewing us we're interviewing them and you know i think that it's it's important and you really, I mean, you're right. Some clues come from everywhere. What's worked really well for me, and I've been surprised, and I, I, it's been a really, you know, sometimes you're having a busy week, you're installing, you've got a lot going on, and it, it's not necessarily representative of your whole life. It's just like a, you've got a like a little rough patch. When I say to people, you know, I we can take on your project, but I can't meet you for a month. I can meet you on this date or whatever. When they say, no problem, that sounds great. I'm like, that is a really good sign. This is because, probably Because, <laughs> you know, we all try and please our clients. We're always trying to make people happy, right? And sometimes that urge isn't really the best for the project. So I have found like, just like that, no problem, let's get together in a month. It's only 30 days. You know, it's, um, it's been a good indicator to me that, you know, there are people that I think I can make happy, right? Somebody, somebody once told me there's no, um, there's no such thing as a decorating emergency. And that's probably a good thing to <laughs> kind of keep in you mind. You know, it's so true. This past year, hasn't it been so crazy? You know, all these problems you yes. know they've really not you know the cushions need to be restuffed and oh no like it's different you yeah. know we have just coming out of this pandemic and you've really you know we really shouldn't have needed to go on through this huge pandemic to kind of weigh priorities and what's really <laughs> critical and important but it's been it's helped me, shall I say, of saying, it'll get done, we'll take care of it, but it's not the, you know, decorating emergency that I might have reacted to before. That's right. You know? Well, let's, I'm, I'm gonna turn our conversation now to um, how you all have been handling client presentations and particularly how you've been handling that during the pandemic when um, you all have, obviously your services and your skills have been in such high demand as we've all been at home kind of thinking through how we want to change our screen though I want to remind our audience if you'd like to submit a question I think I forgot to say this at the outset please do so um, via the Q&A function on Zoom and we will save time at the end to address questions so now I'm going to share my screen this is always the exciting portion of a Zoom and look I think it worked um, and here we all are. I'll, I'll take us to the first slide. 
and ask Martin if you can um, if you can share with us a little bit about what your process has been like to do design presentations for clients uh, over the past fourteen or fifteen months or so. How it's changed? Yeah, you know, obviously we are a very tactile business. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you really need to you you really need to see and touch and feel everything, and so it made it a little different, you know, doing these presentations because we couldn't have the one-on-one -on -one experience. So I, our office has always been a little old fashioned where we create big design boards, you know, where they're all sort of glued together with beautiful pictures and drawings and imagery. And, and then we have fabrics. And then I also have trays with the fabrics and materials that people can touch and feel and we play with. And then after we've gone through those whole, uh, you know, presentations we then will we'll do a, a rendering for the client showing everything they picked from the boards and how it will look well that obviously changed because we couldn't do the one-on-one -on -one. so we've reverted to really just using digital boards um, where we capture images um, a lot of these images are sort of inspiration images where they'll show a finished room that has a flavor or a color palette or something about it that makes sense with what I'm trying to get across to the client. Mm -hmm. And then I'll add in individual pieces. So a chair, a chandelier, something that we actually are proposing to use in those rooms. So on this first stage of the presentation, they're getting to sort of understand the flavor of what I want, the ambiance, and see some of the, the products, some of the items that we're suggesting. And from that, if we get a great uh, reaction, um, and hopefully you do, <laughs> um, <laughs> of course. Um, along with the floor plan and showing the furniture layout, mm. then we'll yeah. come back and we'll show a rendering of the space, um, showing literally what they chose, what I was suggesting, and how it really looks in the room. So, so these are, th there you go. So those previously were, design boards for this particular house, um, showing the library, the color palette, the flavor, the books, mm -hmm. and, then, and then the master bedroom um, that came off of that. And then onto the next slide, um, there you can see the, the, the rendering afterwards where we're showing the library with the, the sort of Prouvé-esque balustrade and the bookcases, wow. um, the skylight through the roof, which allows all the light to flood through, yeah. and then sort of an exterior visual. So we have found that this has been really successful, actually. And the fact that I work a lot uh, abroad, um, it's been kind of amazing because obviously travel has been basically, you know, not possible. Sure. So allowing me to be able to present in this way um, is not only been, has not only been rather successful, but it's also leading the path for me for the future because it's letting me know that I don't have to travel so much. Mm -hmm. I can do this via these uh, computer generated presentations and then we will back it up with a FedEx box full of the fabrics and, and materials so people get to touch and feel. So this has also not only been a great tool for the clients, this has been a great learning process for me to understand that this is a new way of us doing business and definitely the, the way we're going to go forward. That's so interesting. And, um, you know, when you say it's been successful, are you finding that clients can understand your plan and even make decisions based on this kind of virtual format? 100%. You know, and there are many more programs. There are programs where you can have the client almost sort of walk through the rooms and do these 3D experiences. I don't like those so much because I think they take away from the sort of the surprise element at the end, which is the part yeah. that for us as designers is so exciting when you do your <laughs> reveal. Um, oh, that's but, so but, true. That gives me chill bumps. I wouldn't want to take yeah. that away from, from no. either you or the client. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the theater at the end of it all. Yeah. Um, but, you know, some people may want that. And so obviously we, we, we're a service industry. We have to cater to what our clients require. Sure. But it's out there now. We can do this. It's not that hard. Right. And, um, and it certainly is, I think, the way forward. That's amazing. Uh, Sheila, I'm going to call on you next. I know your process has changed quite, quite dramatic, substantially, um, given it has. the virtual format. 
I've never been uh, sort of big on boards. That just hasn't really been a part of my my creative process and practice. But um, certainly during uh, the pandemic, it has been a part of my <laughs> kind of new vernacular because. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, how else um, do you present things to, to clients who are out of town? Uh, this is a, a sort of a little uh, presentation that I put together for a guest bathroom in uh, a, a project that we're working right now uh, that's in Vermont. It's a country home, uh, but it's new construction from the ground up. And um, I was sort of inspired by uh, uh, Vermont license plates, the the I love it. the, the green and white. So it's sort of my favorite license plate in the country. And, uh, and the, then the client, of course, sort of agreed um, uh, since that's where the project is. And we sort of played around with the idea of doing sort of this scheme that sort of green and white as the, the um, kind of background, if you will, for this guest bathroom, and then these other accents of color. So sort of taking a green and white and then adding maybe yellow as an accent or the green and white and then adding sort of like a pumpkin color. Mm -hmm. um, and so this, um, you know, board sort of illustrates that as I talked about, you know, the lighting, accessories, tile, uh, various things, uh, which, um, and in doing that, you know, sort of uh, convince the client to move forward and purchase a number of things. For instance, the um, the taps, the the yellow, uh, um, yes, exactly, the, oh. the faucet and everything. Those are so fun. There. Yeah, so we did them, um, and uh, and and of course, shower head and other components to the bathroom and the tub. You know, all those things sort of match and are kind of interesting. Uh, normally kind of like Martin, you know, we're also presenting a plan. If it's a room, then, you know, there's furniture elements, but again, this is for a guest bathroom and, uh, bathrooms were, were a little bit of a priority for plumbing for the, the builder. Same thing here. Um, you know, just a mix of, of things from different sources that I like to use from Drummond's to, uh, Hector Finch to Waterworks, um, you know, some vintage pieces and, and uh, all this on a backdrop of uh, Tamoris Beastie's uh, toile. Uh, toile. It's actually, a, it's, a, it's a toile, but it's a cloud uh, wallpaper uh, for, for the same client, but their powder room. You know, again, these things are based off of, you know, what the client has told me in terms of color, in terms mm -hmm. of finish, you know, the look they want. You know, we don't like a dark dark stone, we want something that's light. We prefer polished nickel to brass. Um, and then again, once we've presented something like this, we take it to the next step, which is then to uh, actually physically present, you know, those samples, the, the tactile part of this, which is so important, which, which uh, Martin talked about as well. But um, for me, that used to come sooner in the process. And now that comes later. And then, you know, we send packages of things out to clients so they can really touch and feel and, and see these things and put them together. And, and surprisingly, I think people have been able to make decisions almost faster than Unbelievable. they had, you know, sort of, uh, you know, pre-pandemic. Uh, maybe they, I, I'm not sure why that is, but um, I, everyone seems like they're kind of in, an, in a hurry. And maybe that's why. <laughs> it might have something to do with it, I don't know, but everybody seems anxious to, um, you know, kind of shift their home environments to help sort of elevate things, even if it's something small, but it's still satisfying. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of how I've been presenting things, at least initially to clients, or just with very, very simple, um, you know, kind of uh, boards sort of like this, just to you know, I think, you know, back to what Victoria said about trust, if you're, if you want your client to trust you, you know, they have to see that you, even they, if they don't have the vision for it, that you've got the vision and you can see what this is going to look like, even if they can't. Do you, has there been a single category or handful of categories, say fixtures, for example, or lighting or window treatments or fabric that has been more without being able to touch and feel or has it been sort of universally the same process across the board 
Okay, you completely broke up through the first. Oh no, did I freeze? Did I freeze? I was simply asking like, you're, what you're presenting here is a lot of tactile surfaces, including hardware, you know, the things we touch every day. I'm just curious if there's a certain category that's been more challenging to get a decision on without that sort of, you know, being able to touch everything. Just curious. Not, not really, not for okay. so much. Um, I don't know about anybody else, but no, people have been, I feel like have been, we've all had to make, I feel like significant adjustments to True. the we, we work and what this process normally is. And I think um, clients who are, you know, serious about getting things done are, are also making those adjustments too. That's so true. I wanted to show everyone a smattering of Sheila's Twal product. We're actually going to talk about product design um, a few minute, moments later. So I'm going to shift to our next slide, but just, just take it all in because it's so much fun. Um, now, Victoria, I wanted to hear a little bit about how your pro your process has shifted during this kind of virtual environment and some of the specific challenges you faced and kind of how you've overcome them. So this is- uh, I think, you know, in the beginning of this, I thought, oh, the business is over. I've been working all this time, it's done. <laughs> and then I woke up one morning and I'm like, you nut, you have been training your entire <laughs> career for this. This is, you know, what you're cut out for and you it. better pull yourself together and, you know, make this happen. And um, again, I had a completely different process in the office. People would come in. I had lots of things showing them very relaxed, no pressure. <laughs> and then I was like, I felt like I had a gun to my head and I had these deadlines. And what I found was we started doing packages. So this is an example of uh, we would put together packages of items that um, uh, had the dimensions on them mm. because I found I had to do a lot of verbal descriptions on everything. Well, you know, the height of this chair. Well, no, the other chair is 35 inches, not 32 inches. Well, oh, this chair is so wide, so we can do more or less. Usually I'd be sketching on drawings. And um, so that's why this image shows the price, the um, dimensions, lead times, because we've got to get all of that on the table really quick. Yep. So we would do packages that could have a hundred pages, but we jump on a Zoom, flip through them, chat about it. And then I think the next slide, let's see, is something that we never really did that much before. We do um, these boards of, this was a living room I started in the pandemic and finished in the pandemic. And it was very stressful. I'm very proud of this project, but we found once we made a decision, we started putting it on the board mm. because then it was helpful. I, um, the renderings, I always, I'm always worried about a rendering that it's not gonna be exactly right and how it's it going to feel. And on this project, you know, people make fun of me all the time that I'm like, once the project starts, when I start installing it, they can't come in. <laughs> like, this is my time, I need a little time, I need to fix things, make every sure everything's okay. But on this project, which we started, which was really hard in the pandemic and finished it, it was a big gut yeah. reno thing. Um, and I, I should note that all the items on this board had short lead times. Oh, there were you. things that I didn't do anything that had the 20 week lead time because I was so worried about the shutdown. Right. So there were things that um, I knew I could get or were in stock or that we made. But I, after all the years I was working on this project, we start the install and I did my whole spiel and my client who I adore marches in. I'm like, hey, what you doing? You know, did you get lost? You're not supposed to be here. Yeah. And uh, she's like, no, just want to check in. And I was like, okay, but we usually kind of wait, blah, blah. Well, the next day, hi. I'm like, hi. 
And I realized that this year we've lost so much control of our lives mm. yeah. that I thought she needs this. Like, uh, why am I pulling, like, why am I saying no? I think in other times that was okay. People right. went along with it. Interesting. Um, so I kind of like, kind of just kept smiling through it and she was good. So we didn't, I kept trying to bring in a surprise, you know, really do a super big turnover with the music and the flowers so that there was a little theater to the whole, but um, it definitely changed the way we made our decisions, the way we installed, everything was different. So um, how do you think that your, your point, um, about the finishing the installation and kind of not having maybe as much of that reveal process um, makes me think of an, another question, which is how do you think client expectations have changed over the past year? What are they, are they expecting something different from you all now or what are their biggest concerns um, these days? How fast, how quick, yeah. uh, I just, and I always liked my process to be very relaxed, you know, no pressure. And then now it's like, how quickly? I mean, now I'm being asked to do projects in a couple of months, three wow. months, four months, five months. I mean, and it's a whole different process of checking stock availability. Wow. It's like, sometimes I feel like I'm a bookie. Like, when can I get it? No, that's not good. Get me another, you know, it's this intense, like I need it now thing. And I think the immediacy, I think, you know, why postpone, you know, like people are into living now, enjoying their lives, you know, creating their environments and getting on with their life. Right. So I get it. It has for, I think, interior designers changed the game a bit. You know, it's just the degree of difficulty. You're just dancing a little faster and- Yeah, the tempo. And um, <laughs> I used to always say, it was okay to say, I don't know. Cause a lot of times, I don't know about Sheila and Martin, but people would say, well, what do you think? What, what should we do? And I'd say, I don't know. Let's, you know, let's think about it. And I felt good in that pause. Mm -hmm. Now, right. I don't feel that's such a good thing right now. People that want is, more yeah. like, you know, what's the, what is it, you know, that more intense and whereas we'd send out maybe proposals for 10 items, we'd get a payment in. Now everything's done by wire transfer. Right. They want the big, they don't want to do little wires. They want big wires. They right. don't want 10 proposals. They want 50 proposals. Oh my God. And it's just a different game. You know, it's been changing. I don't know whether moving forward this year, whether we'll go back a little bit, but they seem to like it. They like, they're very happy, you know, to keep things moving, but it takes a lot of energy, I think, to continually be on that game. Martin, did you, I, I wondered if you wanted to speak to that notion of there's no more room for uncertainty or there's no time to pause, like. Yeah, I mean, I mean, listen, speed is of the essence without a doubt. <laughs> um, people want things now, they yeah. really do. Even, you know, for me uh, as also a product designer and with my own fabric lines and things, we are having to make sure that we've got stock of everything because if we don't have stock you lose the order right. because nobody's prepared to wait eight 12 weeks they want it in two three weeks oh so and of course with with things being made in italy and china and all these different places that has become a hard situation but um because of that we've sort of learned to uh to design closer to home in a way Interesting. you know using our local vendors Wow. Using vendors that are that, that that carry stock that are U.S. based is really right. helping with the U.S. projects. Okay. Um, but yeah, the, it, it's changed. People don't want to wait. They want to live their lives. They want to, you know, they want to have their best today and experience their best today. And because of that, we have to provide that. It, it's 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 pressure. You know, it's a lot to deal with. Um, having to come up with things fast and furious, but. I, in a way, I like it because there is less time to sort of, as we say in England, to faff around, you know, to, 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 to keep 
to keep looking at options and changing things. They're now, people are more directive and direct you all to pick something and stick with it. Um, well, I love this. Which in a way is kind of amazing. That is amazing. Just to let our audience know, I've, I've moved into some slides showing um, all three of these designers have collections with the Shade Store and these are imagery. Um, this is imagery from their collection. So that's what we're kind of flipping through now. But Sheila, when we were talking to, in preparation for this conversation, you had something really interesting to say about what designing product during the past year has um, has kind of done for you creatively. And I wondered if you could share that with us today. Sure. Um, I, I feel um, as though the, the sort of product design part of my business really, um, you know, sort of saved my business in a way. I was um, like many people, I think at the very, very beginning of the pandemic, you know, we were just shut down. Everything was shut down. There was so much uncertainty about, you know, job sites and, uh, you know, clients pulling out of, you know, I just, I had some um, contracts that were, you know, being signed and then the, you know, people pulled out. I mean, again, there was uncertainty in the market, yeah, all those right. things. So, so I think for those, those first four months, um, I was like many people a little bit in a panic about, you know, how this is all, you know, how this is all going to work out. Uh, but the product design part, because everyone was at home, people are shopping online, uh, people are looking to, to do small things to help sort of elevate, um, you know, their homes, their environments, their lifestyle. So for me, the, the product uh, part of my business really kind of took off because we were able to satisfy that, that need when uh, other you know, parts were shut down. And um, whether it was just um, you know, small things uh, like Martin, you know, for me, it's been a lot of fabrics, people wanting to spruce up, you know, whether it's to make uh, you know, four new pillows or... Right. Uh, Grapery panels or, um, you know, just smaller things um, that just make you happy. I mean, I, for me, I think, um, you know, because I designed some things that aren't in the, the home furnishing sector. So for instance, you know, my Converse, you know, Chuck Taylor sneakers. I mean, you know, to buy a pair of sneakers for a hundred dollars, you sure. know, just for a lot of people made people really happy, you know, sure. so, it is, it is different and than what you might ordinarily sort of do if it weren't the pandemic. So, so for me, um, I, I felt, uh, you know, sort of like how Victoria, you said that you, your whole life, you had been sort of like training kind of for this moment. I kind of feel like the same way too with, you know, I've had my home furnishings business, um, I think almost as long as I have my design business and, and uh, it, it always has taken kind of the, the back seat to my design business. Um, uh, and, and suddenly it, it was, you know, came out kind of in front. And, and again, I felt poised to be, able to, to be able to do these things and make these things, you know, happen, especially because the majority of our products we, we make in the United States. Victoria, you were launching your collection for the Shade Store. Um, oops, I skipped too far ahead. Just as things were shutting down, if I recall. And so it was how did they see? Yeah. Uh, we were like? doing an opening dinner party in, in uh, Dallas. And uh, I was so excited. And it was like, I think it was March 11th, the date oh was. Gosh. And I was like, are we going? Are we flying? Should we go? I don't know. And I woke up one morning and I was like, maybe we should just push it off a couple of weeks just because what if we get stuck down there? I don't know what to do. So, um, uh, you know, so we postponed it. And then I, the joke was, can you believe I'm launching my shade store collection in the, in the middle of a pandemic? I mean, it's like a bad <laughs> joke. I can't believe it. And honestly, the bad joke has been really terrific because you know, the Shade Store is offering product you can get quickly. The right. fabrics are in stock. They do a beautiful job. And um, it's, you know, changing your curtains in your living room makes a huge difference, you know. And I think when you're at home 24-7 and looking around, you're like, I can't believe I've been living with that. That looks terrible. So to be able to do something online, to get swatches in the mail has been great. 
And so as a result, our collection has been really well received. And it's been nice because I don't think we understood the, the marketplace we were creating this for. I imagined a different kind of, uh, you know, I think purchaser, you know, that they were doing more homes or, and now it's just a little of this and a little of that. And it's nice to be able to get product quickly and get it well done and still have it feel somewhat inspired and different, you know? Sure. Um, For sure. How do we, we talked about this, um, you know, all four of us before, but how do you all think the design industry has changed in some permanent ways over the last year? Because there's just been so much change. What do you, maybe what, what sort of changes do you kind of want to hang on to and hope maybe are even improvements? Well, well definitely the uh, Zoom for sure. <laughs> you know, that, that, that it's a tool that is, that is amazing in so many ways for all of us. Um, you know, so that's, that, that's become a great thing. You know, I've even done things like in the last couple of weeks, we've Zoomed clients into our workshops to show them how cool. a chair or a sofa is coming along. I love the, the other day, yeah, the other day I, I, I had one of my assistants that's about the same size as my client sitting on a sofa to show her how deep it was. I love it. You know, you know, and people are open to it. It's kind of amazing. So they still feel they're getting that kind of couture, tailored experience, even though we're not spending the time, you know, to take these special meetings or bring them down to the workshops. Or So Zoom is a tool that, that you know, is definitely here to stay. Love that. The, the behind the I've, scenes aspect of that is so brilliant. I hadn't considered that before, but that's really wonderful. I thought, you know, we were just sending out all these packages, fabrics, things, and they were going in these boxes. And I was like, this is kind of depressing to get this <laughs> box and to open it. And, you know, whereas how you're losing that presentation control that you have in the office. Right. So what we did was we designed these boxes, we did oh. tissue. So now people are saying, oh, I love it when my, you know, the room comes and we get this beautifully presented package and you unwrap it. And so I think that's here to stay. And I think it's, you know, upped our game. Um, yeah. And I think the effort to help people make decisions mm -hmm. easier has been really helpful. I was in the, in my office in New York last week and I, had some meetings in the office, people are getting vaccinated and it was really nice. And I was, it, it was like, you know, diving into the pool again. I was like, this feels different. Yeah. This past year has changed the way we work. And at the end of the meeting, I was like, this was tremendous. Like we, we got so much done and it was because we, We've really, I think, streamlined our process in a way, made it a little more focused, mm -hmm. um, and the clients seem to really like it. Um, it was really great, though, to be that one-on-one -on -one and have people really see things in person. Um, we don't need them as much anymore. You know, before you'd meet people somewhat regularly, and now, like this meeting that we had. Uh, I don't think we'll probably see them for a few months. You know, it, it was, so we got a lot more done. So I, I do think as challenging as this year has been uh, in many ways, it's also been a gift, I think, for designers to look back at the work that they have done, the work they want to do, how they can really help people create their homes, make them comfortable, make them feel good calm them down, a little <laughs> totally. less anxious, right? So um, it's been, you know, as I said, you know, um, I think as designers, we're problem solvers. Um, we're always trying to make things better, fix the, you know, the negatives. So uh, I think it's been nice. I wanna take a few, quite, we have some amazing audience questions. So I wanna to try to get to them um, for here for just a few minutes. Let's see, the first one is, um, how do you, somebody wants to know about kind of walking clients through expectations with regards to finished materials. Um, how has that been working virtually? 
you know, I think, I think that, again, we are a touch and feel business. Finished materials really need to be sent you know, in one of Victoria's beautiful boxes, <laughs> you know, you, you need, you it's need a good to send trick. That. It's, it, it was really, you know, now I can't think of sending anything without the pretty <laughs> box, without the pretty, um, but it's been fun. I do think I'm really discussing the process more. Interesting. I, it, yeah. You know, that creative process you learned in design school, that's kind of in your DNA and you've, you've honed in on it all over the years. I'm now, sharing it it's like uh, what's yeah. in here i'm now like trying to verbalize it so everything has a bubble i <laughs> see something i describe it more i discuss it more i'm like you know well this this sconce you know it has a shade the light's a little softer this you know it, it there is a lot more just to kind of see if that's what they're looking for and so um and you can do that on Zoom, right? You can give all the little ins and outs of what you've done before. Um, but, but I, I think I, for materials though, don't you think you literally have to send them? They have to see Absolutely. that little lump of marble. They have to see yes. the lacquer. They need to see a wood color finish. Yeah, I don't like surprises. I hate surprises. I mean, I don't want, you know, oh, I thought that was going to be, you know, I didn't realize that was cream. I thought that was white. I, 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 I don't like that. So I know I always try and put myself in my client shoes, how I would feel. So I, I don't want there. I always start with, we're going to try and have no surprises. So Love we that. send materials, they sign off on things, you know, it's try and really make sure that there's no, you know, yeah. Confusion, shall we say? Confusion. Quick, quick, super fast question for Sheila. Um, can you share the name of your home furnishings business? And then oh. I've got a question for all of you. It's just, it's Sheila Bridges Home. Um, it's, yeah, Sheila, Sheila Bridges Home and my design firm is Sheila Bridges Design. Very original. And um, you can you can find more on our website. website. I mean, everything is you know generally on our you know my website at sheilabridges.com, and that's where you know you can purchase most things. There's some obviously collaborators that you would buy things you know through uh, you know like at the shade store, obviously not through me, um, you know things like that. But uh, yeah, just sheilabridges.com. One a couple more questions if we have time. Uh, somebody wants to know, and this is a really good question, especially for emerging designers, but how did you all get involved with um, the shade store? And then more broadly, how have you um, how have you generally approached you know product licensing and product design conversations with outside partners? I mean I've I've been using the shade store for a while now and um, attended several of their events and things and just uh, you know, they approached me and asked me if I'd be interested to do it. And I was delighted to do this because for me, I love, you know, most of my product, I have 16 licenses <laughs> and, you know, at least 10 of them are purely to the trade. Right. So the beauty for me of, of, of working with a company like the Shade Store is apart from the fact they have great quality, they have great service, is that they are to the public. Mm. So, so people can actually, you know, people can go out and buy the product. That's great. Um, it's been great. I mean, for me, just, just so you know, the Shade Store, I have designed this entire collection during the pandemic, and we have done everything via Zoom or little, you know, FedEx, basically. Um, and we launch in September, coming up this September. Um, and I'm very excited because it's a whole new kind of look and feel for me and for the Shade Store, I think. And um, I'm just really excited to be amongst not only this very fine group of designers, uh, <laughs> Sheila and Victoria and their beautiful collections, but I'm really happy to be part of this company that is really blossomed throughout the pandemic okay. and allowing people to be able to purchase directly and get it fast, furious, and top of the line designer styles. It's fantastic. It's the way forward. I totally agree. That's really well said. It's inspiring. Um, let's see, uh, lots of questions about what kind of software you use. I think particularly in creating renderings, um, and, or these sort of digital virtual board presentations. Oh my God. I think that we use something called Rivet, but 
listen, I'm the guy that signs the checks, doesn't do the <laughs> renderings. <laughs> Any other technical uh, shares? One other question, and you know, Victoria, this is you know, up to you to decide whether or not you want to disclose, but do you have a source for the design of your boxes, your, your sort of high-end I don't, I, I will, um, I'll take a photograph and reveal that. I don't know the source offhand, but I, oh. I definitely will post it on Instagram or something. People are, it's I, funny, mail it's, days. It's, 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 it's another good reason to follow Victoria on Instagram. That's right, uh, that's exactly right. <laughs> I, um, the importance you know, of I, a good mail day though these days has only gone up. I do think the Shade Store, when they came to me, I, I realized, I thought, well, I'm not sure what I would do. And then I realized that I was, I wanted something all the time. And that's always like, for me, a reason to design a chair, design a table. It inspires me to do something different. But I kept realizing, I kept railroading every fabric because I wanted things to go the other way. <laughs> and they, they were open, you know, and as they describe it, east, west stripes, not oh, north, south it. stripes. And I was like, wow, I, I, okay, yeah, I like east, west. So I like what that does, you know, that energy it brings to a room. So it was really such a lovely collaborative process. And I think to be able to come into an interior designer's office who, you know, they don't deal with hundreds of clients base but to be able to create something for the market that everyone can purchase and use um, I think it's really nice it, um, because my other uh, lines that I do are to the trade so it is very nice that this is out there for everyone it's really great um, one more question if you're traveling with your client for inspiration and discovery um, this is obviously you know pre-pandemic. Um, how are you sort of building that into how, um, how you're getting compensated by your client? Um, and, and how are you compensating for not being able to do that today? So, you know, that might be was core to your process before, oh, let's go on a buying trip to Europe. You're not able to do that today. How are you sort of making up for that in this realm? I never charged for that. Um... I don't charge by the hour, I charge a fee um, along with commissions, which I think is pretty standard. Um, those kinds of things, you know, I, I, don't, I don't like my clients to feel like the clock is ticking, mm -hmm. even though they like to make lots of jokes about it. It's not true. <laughs> and um, I just think that being generous with one's time and being patient, mm -hmm really pays off in really much bigger ways down down the stream so it's always been my practice to not um do that so it's just a personal um, yeah i'm the i'm the same way i mean i we charge a design fee we don't charge hourlies um uh, and there's nothing greater than obviously going on a trip with your clients to shop you know, going to the Paris flea market or going to London, to the Portobello Road or something. I mean, it's just magic because not only do you find great things, you create a wonderful story um, for the client and they have such a connection with that. But obviously it, we haven't been able to do that this year, but you know, we can shop the world still with, with things like First Dibs and Cherish and all of those sites. My still screen offer that to time, the client. I, I've got, I have that notification and every day it's telling me your screen time's up, 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 up. <laughs> and I do realize that I am spending a lot more time shopping online, looking online, being inspired by other designers online. You know, not being able to travel, which we all took for granted, was a great source of inspiration. And those magical trips where you'd go for a long weekend and go and furnish a townhouse and... Oh. You know, those are great memories. Um, I think that it'll come back and um, we'll be able to do that again, but... Um, we can we can do it now. I, I just went to Round Top with a client, oh, did that whole I four days in Texas. It was so much fun. We bought 86 things. 
some of wow. which we shouldn't have bought, but we got very carried away with the fact we could shop again. Right. But listen, it's coming back, guys. It's coming back. And go out and support those people because so many of them have lost so much money and their livings have been so, so compromised that to go and shop at a flea market or a fair or, or you know, one of those things like a round top not only gives you so much energy, but it gives back to the community. Love. So put those masks on, get vaccinated and get out there. Ah, uh, words to live by. So true. It's I'm gonna so let true. That I'm gonna let that be our final, um, our final words of wisdom for today. And I'm gonna go put my mask on. I've already been vaccinated. I'm gonna hit the road. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you all so much. This has been so much Bye, fun. This is so Thanks. fun. Thanks to ADAC. Thank you to the Shade Store and best wishes for a happy and healthy and fun spring and summer. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.